Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony is the newest game in the ever-growing franchise by Spike Chunsoft. The story this time around is that a brand new group of Ultimate students have been locked inside a school campus and are thrown into yet another killing game by Monokuma and the brand new Monokums. While the similarities to the first Danganronpa are strong at first, things quickly take some very sharp turns away from that, and the plot went to places I really didn't see coming at all. As usual, I can't talk about anything specific here in order to avoid spoilers, but I will say that despite this being the third mainland game in a rather sprawling franchise, the quality is still as high as ever. You'd think the writer, Kazutaka Kodaka, would run out of ideas, but it's become clear that his well of ideas runs very deep. Having loved the second game so much, I went into this one with a few unfair biases. I was really uncertain if this one would be able to come anywhere near the second in terms of its story, characters, and surprises, and this attitude definitely prevented me from connecting with the game as quickly as I normally would. Once I got over it, Danganronpa V3 proved itself to have a great story, some interesting level ideas to break up any potential monotony in the school setting, and another set of memorable characters. Due to the nature of the killing game, there are always going to be some characters that you don't get to know much about as they die too early. However, this game manages to remedy that issue by having some of the earliest scenes in the game come back up as pivotal plot points near the end of the game. Speaking of the ending, and that has been rather controversial amongst Danganronpa fans, and at first I didn't really like it. However, after spending a few hours thinking it over and talking to friends about it, I came to the conclusion that it swerved the hell out of everyone and was actually pretty brilliant. It might not hit the highs Danganronpa 2 achieved, but it was pretty darn close. Most of the gameplay has you either walking around the maps in a first-person view or reading text. Not going any further than this would be pretty typical for most visual novels, but the Danganronpa series has always had some fun, logic-based minigames in the form of class trials. All of the previous class trial minigames are here, but Danganronpa V3 adds a few new ones, which brings the total up to six. The new minigames are Lying, Stretch the truth to change the direction in a stalled debate. Argument armament. A one-on-one -on -one debate with an opponent wearing armor made of their own arguments. You must shoot down their theories by timing the correct button presses to the music. Debate scrum. When the class is split down the middle, you need to counter the other side's arguments one by one to move forward. Mind mine. You need to clear away colored blocks in order to find the correct item hidden behind, with the blocks changing color every time you hit them. Psych Taxi. You drive down a stretch of road, running into blocks to fill in the blanks to a question. Once you've got the question revealed, you will need to pick the correct answer in order to pick up a passenger and continue onward. And finally, Mass Panic Debate. Similar to the regular non-stop debates, but with everyone rapidly talking over each other in a panic, and you need to find the inconsistent statements within. On the regular difficulty setting, none of the minigames are particularly difficult, although at times I had issues getting exactly what the game was trying to get at. Even when I did have issues though, figuring out the answer by trial and error was generally easy enough, as the game gives you quite a bit of leeway when it comes to incorrect answers. If you're still finding it too difficult, or would rather have an easy-going experience, there is an easier mode available that can be switched to at any time. If you want something more difficult, the game has you covered with a difficulty appropriately named Mean. Another part of the game is learning about the other students during free time sections. These play out exactly like they have in previous installments. You find which character you want to know about and ask to hang out with them. At the end of that sequence, you have the option to give them a present, and if you give them something they like, they will tell you more about themselves and you will earn a friendship point. These points are used to buy skills for use in the class trials, which have uses like expanding your health or your focus meter. If you've managed to max out any of your friendships, you will unlock a special skill from them. None of these skills really matter much on the easiest mode, but if you're playing on harder difficulties, you'll probably want to have at least a few of them around. The gifts you need to unlock these points are obtained from a gashapon machine in the school, as well as the casino that opens up later in the game. 
The Gashapon will give you all sorts of different items, but the more you use it, the higher the chance you'll get a repeat, unless you put in more coins to skew the odds in your favor. While Danganronpa V3 does have a number of free time sections, it's impossible to get all of your friendships maxed the first time through the game. Now you can certainly go back through the game to unlock more, but instead you can play Dangan Selman Team, which is unlocked after playing through once. In this mode you have free reign of only the courtyard and casino, and your main goal is to progress your friendships without anything else really getting in the way. Completing the game also unlocks two other modes to keep you coming back for more. The Ultimate Talent Development Plan and Despair Dungeon, Monokuma's Test. These two modes are linked together, so you'll need to play the development plan at least once to unlock the dungeon. The Ultimate Development Plan plays out sort of like a digital board game without any other players. You get three years to move around the board, with each turn counting as one month, and the goal is to make a complete circle around each year. Rolling the dice will allow you to move around, and landing on a square will either increase or decrease your stats. You can also run into other characters who will give you useful items for the game, and they will sometimes show up in events. If you manage to make it to your goal in a year, you'll be put to the test fighting enemies. Winning isn't mandatory here, but if you can manage it, you do win some money to buy unlockable characters, which include numerous students from games past. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is the point of this game? Every character you level up in this mode can then be used in the next mode, Monokuma's Dungeon. This is a pixel-based dungeon crawling game where you try to get as far down the dungeon as you can go. There's no real point to this mode in regards to the main game, but it is a fun side thing to do. Rui Komatsuzaki returns as the character designer for Danganronpa V3, and as a fan of Japanese street fashion, his designs have always hit a niche that I feel is underutilized in games. The combination of more typical manga elements with edgier fashion has made all of his characters instantly recognizable, and given the Danganronpa series a unique identity all of its own. The look of the rest of the game is very similar to the previous two, with all the environments you walk around in being 3D rendered, while everything else is 2D, including the characters. This leads to an interesting paper doll effect when characters are on screen, which is very unique. Danganronpa's music by composer Masafumi Takada, a frequent collaborator of Suda51, also helps set the game apart. There's a blend of all sorts of styles here, with some tracks sounding very upbeat and others sounding extremely dark and foreboding. Some of the more iconic tracks make a reappearance here, along with a slew of brand new tracks. The new tracks are just as good as the old and blend in seamlessly, adding up to a soundtrack that suits the game to a T, as well as one that is very listenable all on its own. In conclusion, Danganronpa V3 is a worthy entry in the series, and has me excited to see what happens in the next installment. While there was no need for Spike Chunsoft to reinvent the wheel, the new touches they did add were nice and shows that they don't want to half-ass sequels for this series. This one is well worth playing, despite the contentious ending, but as with Danganronpa 2, you have to play the previous games first to really get what's going on. Suggesting a new player go through 40 plus hours of games to get into this one is certainly a lot to ask, but if you ever wanted a great visual novel series to get into, Danganronpa will not let you down.